So as we talked about earlier, the first step in a time series decomposition is to calculate that long-term trend uh, in your data. In the CO2 data that I'm showing you again here, what really pops out is that linear-ish long-term trend. And often when we think about long-term trends, that's the pattern that we think about. But it's really important to remember that for time series decomposition, we are not, that's not the only type of long-term trend that we are trying to extract. We're really trying to extract any kind of long-term cross-year pattern in the data. This could look something like the CO2 data like we have here. It could be three to five year cycles like those driven by El Nino events, long-term ice oscillations in the data, or it might even be more irregular fluctuations in the data that last for years at a time. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is that it's the cross-year patterns that emerge out of, the, out of the data. And that's what this first step is trying to extract. One of the classic ways that many time series decomposition, one of the approaches that many time series decomposition methods use for extracting that long-term trend is something called a moving average. A moving average is an approach that attempts to smooth or average over those short-term fluctuations in the data to extract the more long-term trends that, can, that are emerging. And that's what you're seeing here with the CO2 data, is that blue line is, is what you would often see emerging from this cyclical or highly fluctuating seasonal data that tends to smooth out over those or average over those seasonal fluctuations to get, for example, an average for the value for the year um, or for some other time window. Let's go look at our uh, fake time series that I drew for you earlier to see how a moving average works in operation. So here we have our time series once again, where we have individual observations as the dots over time. So the moving average approach smooths over these shorter term fluctuations by taking an average value over some window of, of observations. And this window of observations is called the order. Operationally, what ends up happening is for any particular focal time period, and I'm going to focus on this one, if I had an order of five, it means that I am going to average over five values, and I'm going to take the two values before, my focal value, and the two values afterwards. And I will average those five values together to get a new value at time t. What we're gonna do is slide this window along the entire time series, and for each observation we have, we will now be calculating a new averaged value that includes it and the data right around it to uh, provide us with a new averaged out uh, look at what the system is doing. And so for this first window, it spanned this range of values. What this algorithm is going to do now is slide this, this window over one and calculate a new average value for this data point. And then do the same thing over and over and over again all along this time series. I'm gonna clean up the screen real fast. While this approach generally produces a averaged value for every observation in our time series, we do lose data at the beginning and the end of the time series. These windows are balanced around every observation. So if I'm taking, if I'm calculating my smoothed value for this observation right here, I'm taking these two values from in front and these two values from in back for this window size of five. As we get close to the beginning of the time series, in these first couple of time points, clearly there's no data from before the, the time series began. So what generally happens is you lose your first few time points depending upon the size of the window that you chose. 
In this case, because we chose a window size of five, we're going to lose that moving average value for this one and this one. But because there are two data points before this observation I just labeled with an um, arrow, our moving average values will start for that. The bigger the window, the more data you're going to lose at the beginning and the end of your time series. All right, let's clean the screen again. And let me explain one other issue with moving average windows. So for our initial example, we used a window size that was an odd number, five. What happens if we choose something that is even, like an order of four? We still are going to have a central observation. That means we only have three other observations that we're going to put into that, that moving average. And where do they come from? We can't balance that number of three evenly before and after the, the observation. And what this means is that you end up with an unbalanced average. So more of your information will be becoming, will come from either before your data point or after your data point. And that can skew things. Um, and so generally what you will see is when you are doing moving averages, you will tend to see a odd size for your, for your window. Odd not being strange, but odd being an odd number of data points that are going into the average. So let's move to R, and we're going to calculate a moving average on our data just to explore this concept a little further. 